Hey everybody, Mike Wodinski here. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to even a sky that was polarized on a wide angle lens. As you can see in this image here, we have a sort of a blue dip here and it's lighter on the left and it's lighter on the right. So we wanna sort of neutralize this and make it look a little more natural. So let's go ahead and dive in here. The easiest way to deal with this sort of issue in Lightroom is to use local adjustments. And today we're gonna to be using some radial gradients. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my masking options and scroll down to radial gradient. Shift M is the keyboard shortcut here. And I want to sort of make this part of the sky a little bit darker. And I'm probably gonna blend in some darkness here as well. So we're just gonna kinda of click and draw and then I can click this center circle, kind of move it over. And I'm just gonna feather this into that dark spot. So I'm gonna grab the red dot here and shrink it all the way down because I want this to be pretty subtle. And then I'm gonna take my exposure, start to bring that down. You can see it's already starting to blend a little bit. And I might drag this down a little bit more. And this looks a little more gray than this blue. Um, there's two things I could do here. I could either warm it up and see if I can kind of make it fit in with the glow here, or I could try and cool it down to try and make it match this blue over here. It doesn't really matter what I do. It's just sort of a matter of taste. And since we do have a little bit of a warm glow here, I think I'm going to try and warm this up a little bit and add a little bit of magenta. Drag that in even a little bit more. And I think I may even add a bit of a color cast. So right here where it says color, I'm gonna click here. And unfortunately I can't click. Lightroom doesn't give me an option to, to sample from the image here, but I can just drag this little spot here and move it over the image. And we're gonna be somewhere in these blues. And I can, in Increase the intensity of it here on the bottom. Maybe pull this side back a little bit. And I'm gonna bring this up because I want that, I don't want, you can see right now this center is darker than up top and I want the top to be the darkest. So we're gonna bring the center of the radial gradient up to the top and then kind of bring this down like so. And I can turn that off and we can hit the before and after. That's already starting to look a little bit better. You can see we have it darker over here and it's gradually becoming lighter. It's okay for the sky to not be this all the same tone, but what we do want is a natural gradient across the sky and which is kind of what we got going on here. Um, I do wanna sort of blend this area a little bit as well. I think it's just sort of a little gray and maybe a little lighter, so maybe we can bring in another radial gradient. This time, Shift M, drag it in. And again, we can kind of bring it up towards the top. And I'm gonna take the exposure down just a little bit. And again, it's kind of grayish, so again, I'm gonna go down to the color, click here, and drag up to the blues, maybe even a little bit towards the magenta, sort of purple because the sun's rising over here, it's a little warm, kind of orange, and naturally at sunrise, this side of the sky would, would be sort of a, a purple-pink color. So maybe something like that. Again, drag it up. I'm gonna expand it a little bit and pull it down. like so. And I'll hit the backslash key to show you the before and after. That's already looking a lot better. And since we're here, I think I'm gonna emphasize this warmth right here. Again, with another radial gradient, Shift M. Drag it in pretty long like this. And this time I'm gonna warm it up with yellows and magenta. And I'll expand this just a little bit so it feathers out real nicely. 
even a little bit more. And maybe back this off just a pinch. And there you go, now we have a sky that is nice and even and inviting to the viewer. So let's go ahead and try this again in Photoshop. So I'm gonna head over to our starting point like we did earlier. And now I'm gonna open this up in Photoshop. Control click, edit in, and I'm gonna open it up as a smart object in Photoshop. This will just allow me to access the sliders that I have access to in Lightroom in case I need them, but I'm not planning on using them for this tutorial. Even so, this is a good habit to get into. Um, you should always open up as a smart object if you're just opening up a single image into Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and now I'm gonna try a different technique that can often work, especially if you don't have many clouds in the sky, much like this scene right here. So this is actually pretty easy to do. We're gonna create a new layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this plus icon, and I'm gonna switch to my brush. So I'm gonna hit B for the shortcut, and I'm gonna increase my brush size, so right bracket key. And right now my opacity is set to 100, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down quite a bit. I'm gonna bring it down to maybe like 20, 23, 22, how about that? And what I love about this technique is we can sample from the sky. So I'm gonna hold Option and sample right here where it's a little bit darker, and I'm just gonna to start to brush that in on the left-hand side of the screen. And we have a bit of a line right here, and I'm gonna feather it in even more, so I'm gonna go down to 10%. I just hit the one on the keyboard, and I'm gonna feather that in. Ever so slightly. And you can see it's as simple as that. I think maybe we could use a little bit more, so I'm gonna go up to 20% and kind of really bring this in. Back down to 10 to feather this section. And there we go. And I can turn this on and off to kind of see the before and after. Now this looks okay, but we are starting to lose some of the nice glow that we had over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another new layer. And this time I'm gonna sample from down here. And I'm gonna change the blend mode to overlay. This is sort of like a dodge burn effect. And I got 10% opacity. I'm actually gonna bring this down to 5%. So 05 is the keyboard shortcut for that. And I'm just gonna kind of paint this in and kind of feather over here from the left and even into that dark area. And I'm gonna create another new layer. And this time I'm gonna sort of warm this up even a little bit more. I'm gonna drag up maybe to these oranges and really kind of bring this uh, point to the top and maybe right around here. And with, again, another low opacity brush, I'm just gonna kind of brush in just a few of those strokes. Kind of bring that morning light into the scene. And that looks pretty good. Now, we could leave this set to normal, or if I had clouds, I might wanna switch this to overlay. That might help blend in a little bit more. But in this case, since we don't have any clouds, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this set to normal. Now, if we're worried about painting into our landscape, if I'm kind of feathering in down here, I might wanna switch this blend mode back to overlay, and that'll just help blend in with the landscape. I won't just be painting straight paint. It's more of like a um, translucent paint that kind of allows the shadows and the light areas of the landscape to still shine through. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit a snapshot. And now we can look at the before. So this is where we started and this is where we are. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out naturemike.com for some in-field workshops, private post-processing lessons, and some great how-to articles. See you in the next video.